I quit the gang life for my wife, but she lied to my face for over a decade, so I spent years taking everything from her. I was 19, and it was my first day out of jail when my girlfriend Mary sat me down. She explained that she was pregnant and it was mine. She told me she was nervous but really wanted to keep the child. It didn't take much thought on my end. The supposed love of my life was pregnant with my child and it was time to be a man. That was the day I quit the gang life for good, turning my back on the life that would lead to death or jail. I proposed to her soon after and she said yes. I went to a trade school to become a mechanic and I busted my ass for my future family. When my daughter Luna was born, it was the most intense day of my life. Mary wouldn't stop bleeding. She went into shock and they had to give her an emergency C-section. She was in the hospital for months but eventually made a full recovery. She finally came home and I catered to her every need for a while until she was at full strength. When Mary started feeling like herself again, Luna became my world. I wanted her life to be the best. I wanted to give her the world. When Mary was released, I promised her that our daughter will have a life far better than ours, and for years I kept that promise. I saved enough money to move us to the suburbs, became homeowners, and I was her number one cheerleader. I made sure Luna went to private school made sure she knew how to defend herself, and always made sure I was the perfect husband. As the years went by, I owned my own garage. My cousin, who I considered my best friend, became a pastor, and my relationship with my wife was stronger than ever. I made sure I kept my prison body, but Luna, Luna hated me. Since she turned 13, she just started hating me. She didn't want me to hug her, rolled her eyes every time I told her I loved her, ignored me when I asked her about her day in school. It hurt me and Mary saw it. She told me that she's a teenager and that I should just let it ride. I wanted to show her how much I loved her, so for her quinceanera, I wanted to go all out. I got everything she wanted and she was still disrespectful, and briefly the old me almost came out just to put her in her place, but instead I went to my cousin, vented my frustration and doubts about being a good father, and he told me to just let her be and he said a prayer for me. I wanted a slideshow for the father-daughter dance. I got a chunk of the pictures of us together, but I realized I didn't have any recent pictures of us. She didn't want to take any. The last time I had pictures of her and I smiling with me was on her 13th birthday, and those were on my daughter's broken tablet. I took that tablet, went to a repair shop, and I didn't care about the cost. After a day and $300, the tech fixed it and I was happy. Little did I know that this happiness would soon be followed by the biggest heartbreak of my life. I opened her tablet and then the instant messages appeared. It was my daughter talking to my wife. It was a long banter that she didn't want me to dance with her and it did hurt, but like my wife said, she's being a teenager. Then she said something that destroyed me. She texted why she had to do the father-daughter dance with me since I'm not her father. I wasn't her father. I wasn't. I felt my heart stopped. I got dizzy. My mouth dried up and I needed to sit down. My wife responded that I raised her. I loved her. And that makes me her father. But Luna responded by saying that my cousin is her father and and she can't wait for her to turn 18 so she could tell me the truth and she could live with her real dad, that she hated me. She thanked God that I'm not her father. Mary began cussing her out, saying that it was a mistake for my cousin to tell her the truth two years ago, and the more they talked, the angrier I got. My wife lied to me for 15 years. My cousin, whom I confide my issues about Luna and my fears about being a bad father, not only slept with my wife but had me raise his child. I wanted to hurt them. I felt a mixture of anger, sorrow, grief. I wanted to scream, cry, and die at the same time if that makes any sense. I went to a dark place and so I wouldn't do anything stupid. I told Mary that I needed to focus on work so I could pay the quince, and instead I drove to Manhattan and saw my old public defender who wasn't a low-level attorney anymore. He had a nice expensive firm near Midtown East. I was surprised that he remembered me, but apparently, I was his first case as a public defender. We sat down and I told him everything, gave him the tablet and when he turned it on, the messages just kept coming. Only this time Luna was talking to my cousin, her real father, and he was telling her to give me a chance, how I was always there for her, but Luna told him that so was he, how it makes sense that they have so much in common and even called him Poppy multiple times in their conversation, and he responded and told her that she was his little girl. We went through our options and he asked me what do I want to do, and I told him that I wanted to go full scorched earth. I wanted to poison the well and he asked me several times if that is what I wanted and nodded. I also told him that everything had to be filed before the quince in two weeks, so we sat down and spent the next 12 hours on what needed to be done, and I followed his instructions to the letter. I secretly placed my business for sale, called the private school and told them that I will not be paying for next year, closed the college accounts and the savings that I had for Luna, and prepared to place my house for sale online. No one was the wiser. I followed his instructions perfectly. There was only one thing I deviated from, the day of the quince. That day went off without a hitch. The whole family was there. Luna was smiling, having fun. Mary kept asking me if I was okay and I lied to her. It was hard lying to her. From the moment I met her, I never lied to her and during those two weeks, every time I kissed her, held her, made love to her. It was hard not to scream at her. It was hard not to hate her. She knowingly let me raise another man's child. She slept with my cousin, a man who saw as my brother, the godfather of my child, the best man when I eloped, my confidant. So the rage was hard to suppress, to say the least. When it was time for the father, daughter dance, I called her to the center of the stage. She looked annoyed, but walked over. I had the music playing, and she smiled, and it tore me apart, seeing her smiling at me. For years, I wanted to see that smile again, and now I didn't want it. As we danced, I had the slideshow playing, pictures of the two of us, and towards the end of the song, screenshots of her text messages with her mother and real father. Needless to say, this didn't bode too well. Mary looked like 
like she saw a ghost. Luna just kept staring at the large screen and my cousin just stared at me with fear. Mary ran to me and told me that she could explain and I told her that I filed for a divorce, that she could explain it in court. She grabbed my arm, begging me and I pulled back. I told Luna that I busted my ass to give the world and now she doesn't deserve it. I began to walk out but not before telling my cousin that every time I see him I'm going to knock him out. Then, I knocked him out. The aftermath was harsh. Mary and Luna was at my grandmother's apartment. Her family was shocked and disgusted with her. They wanted nothing to do with her. My grandmother had to audacity to tell me about the story Abraham and how when came back from battle three years later, his wife had a one-year-old child and he raised him as his own and how I should be like Abraham. So I told her to get the hell out of my house. Mary came a few days later crying as soon as she saw me, telling me that it was an accident, that when I was arrested she was so angry at me and my cousin was there to console her and one thing led to another and they slept together. It happened only one time and she was faithful to me ever since. She was willing to take a lie detector test to prove it. So I asked her how long she knew Luna wasn't mine and she started crying more. That look she gave me just told me that she knew from day one and asked her to leave. She wanted to go to counseling, telling me that I'm overreacting and we could make it work. It was in the past and I needed to get over it. That I am Luna's father, despite what happened, and I allowed my temper to get the best of me. I must have repeated get over it, over a dozen times at full volume while grabbing her things and tossing it out the door. I told her that I didn't want to see her face ever again, and I told her that this life that I built no longer belongs to her before shoving her out the door. A couple of weeks went by and she kept blowing up my phone. Not once Luna tried to reach out to me. Mary was shocked to learn that I sold my business, even more so when she learned that I had an open house. She came in screaming, telling the viewers to get out of her house and pleading with me to seek help, that I was ruining our marriage, that I had no right to sell our home, the home where we raised our child in, and I told her that this house is full of lies. It's a house where I raised another man's child, and when I sell it, I will give her half, and ordered her to get out before I called the cops. It was a bluff. All she had to do was play the victim and I would have been arrested, but she didn't. She complied. Shortly after this, my cousin came to talk to me and I knocked him out, dragged him outside, and closed the door. I refused mediation. Mary wanted to reconcile, but I didn't. I wanted a divorce and my attorney filed for a fast-track divorce, and in three months we were in the Nassau County Courthouse. I barely spoke to anyone during that time. My attorney took care of everything. First, Mary's lawyer tried to talk about my past when I was in a gang, as if my past barred a reason for me to be a terrible husband and father. But my attorney quickly smacked that down and the judge reprimanded her attorney for trying to shame someone who turned their life around. My attorney presented all the evidence and offered a lump sum alimony payment with the pending sales of the house and business. At first, Mary kept asking me to reconsider, but I ignored her, and when she finally realized that I'm not budging, she agreed. Yet the real surprise happened when it came to child support. My attorney presented all of the text messages from Luna's conversation with Mary, showing that not only Luna knew I am not her father, but she cannot wait to be with her real father, saying that she no longer has to live a lie. Mary was completely caught by surprise from this. Then my attorney filed a motion to have my name removed from Luna's birth certificate, have my last name removed as well as not being responsible for any child support since all parties agree that my cousin was her father. Mary was shocked by this. She yelled at me, begged me not to do this to Luna, that I am her father because I raised her and as pathetic as I may sound right now, but if Luna didn't act that way towards me, this. She yelled at me, begged me not to do this to Luna, that I am her father because I raised her and as pathetic as I may sound right now, but if Luna didn't act that way towards me, if she didn't say those things, I would have agreed. There were moments that I wanted to reach out and try to make it work, but then I would look at Luna's continuing text messages to her friends, her real father and mother, and I refocus on my resolve. The judge was quiet for a long while, reading page after page after page of the text messages. In the end, she agreed. I was not financially responsible for Luna and my name could be removed. My attorney also filed a motion for the courts to go after my cousin to pay for child support and a motion to sue my cousin in civil court for all the money I have spent raising Luna. The private schools, dance classes, Girl Scouts, horseback lessons, everything I have ever spent on that child and after my attorney explained to the judge that my cousin committed fraud for knowingly allowing me to raise his daughter and not offer any financial support or assistance. It was a Hail Mary, and the damn judge agreed. I didn't bother looking at Mary when the judge made her decision. I didn't bother listening to her as I walked out the courthouse. I didn't care as I heard her cry, her telling me that she only cheated one time and was faithful ever since. I just didn't care anymore. A few weeks later, my ex called me, shocked that I stopped payments on Luna's private schools and all of her activities, and told her to call her baby daddy before hanging up. Even Luna called me, first time since this entire ordeal, and she calls me crying that she has to go to public school, that they were moving to the old neighborhood and how scary it was and how she wanted us to be a family again. I told her to go to her real father, the man who she truly wanted, and ask him. I yelled at her, told her that not only she knew for years, but I read all the text messages, the back and forth and from her own words. She was thankful that a hoodlum like me wasn't her father, even though I haven't been a hoodlum since the day I found out I was going to be a father. I hung up on her after that. I thought about ending it countless times, thought about ending my cousin, but I made him pay. He had to pay me a half a million dollars, a half a million that was all mine and not one cent belonged to my ex because she agreed on the lump sum. I didn't care that the money came from the church. I was hurting. I left New York shortly after, went to Idaho as furthest away from New York as possible. I just picked a random state and city and just left. Opened up a new shop, got a house, but for two years,
years, I had trust issues. For two years, I saw a therapist, anger management. I went to rage rooms. It was difficult. Until I found myself going back to church, and ironically, that was where I met my fiancé. Jocelyn is wonderful. She just turned 30 at the time, and we just hit it off. I told her everything that happened to me. I explained to her that I'm going to have trust issues, and she understood. A year later, she told me that I was going to be a dad, and insisted that for me to have a DNA test, just so I can have peace of mind. I forgot what it felt like to be happy again, and when my son was born, I was overjoyed. I called my grandmother for the first time in years. She cried, and when I told her about my son, she insisted that I come to New York so she could meet her great-grandchild, guilt tripping me by saying that she's 90 and would like to see me one more time, and I agreed. We flew to New York, rented a car, and drove to Bushwick. The one thing I dislike about the hood, you only need to see one person from your past, and the whole neighborhood knows that you're back. My grandmother saw my son, met my fiancé, made an offshoot comment in Spanish about her being white, and I just yesed her to death. I was planning to spend the week, do the tourist thing for once. It was Jocelyn's first time in her life in the Big Apple, and I wanted to make it special. Damn it. Nothing works out as planned. First, my ex shouted my name from downstairs. I looked out the window and was surprised how fat she got. My grandmother told me in Spanish to talk to her, and Jocelyn agreed. I went downstairs, was awkwardly silent for a minute, and that anger just came back like a flood. Mary told me that I looked good and said that she looked like crap. She told me that she missed me, that she never been with another man since the divorce and I ignored her. She even had the audacity to tell me that I'm a grandfather and I gave her a look. Apparently Luna got with a decent guy and got knocked up at 18. Her baby daddy joined the Marines to support them and her father wanted nothing to do with her, just pays the child support and refuses to acknowledge her. He's no longer a pastor and is working at the Banco Popular two blocks over. Then told me that Luna named the baby after me and I couldn't stand looking at her. Mary wanted me wait because Luna was on her way over and I just walked away. I went to my grandmother's house and I didn't have to tell Jocelyn anything. She just knew and we left. In the elevator I told her what happened and she smiled and told me everything was going to be all right. The look on Mary's face when we left the building. She was looking at my fiance like she was the other woman and Jocelyn without missing a beat introduced my son to her. Well, she said, I would like you to meet his biological child. That was a knife twist, but she knew my pain. Mary kept trying to stop me from leaving, telling me that Luna felt bad about what she did and Jocelyn wanted me to make amends, but I was so angry. I hopped into the car. Ignoring Mary's pleas, Jocelyn told me to extend an olive branch, so I gave her my number so Luna could call me and left. At the red light I saw my cousin by the Cuchifrito stand and I don't know what came over me. I got out the car, ran up to him and beat the crap out of him. Jocelyn was screaming, telling me to stop, and when we locked eyes, I could see the fear. I spit on him and left. A few months of no contact with anyone went by, but then on Father's Day, Luna tried calling me several times. I wanted to answer, I didn't, but all that kept lingering in my mind was those messages, what she said to her mother, to her real father, her friends. So I ignored it. Eventually, I listened to her voicemail and she sounded so cheerful, she briefly apologized for her actions, but to me, it didn't sound sincere, just passive. My grandmother and my fiancé told me to give her a chance. But when I asked my grandmother if Luna or Mary ever asked about me in the four years I left, she said Mary did, constantly, but not Luna. So in my twisted mind, I thought Luna wanted me in her life so her child would be taken care of. After some appointments with a therapist, I decided to respond. I sent a small email to Luna that simply said, what do you want? I didn't expect her multi-paragraph response. She started the email profusely apologizing for how she acted. She said when she found out I wasn't her father, she was angry. She confronted her mother and she cried, making her promise not to tell me. Since she felt lost, she began to talk to my cousin, her real father, more and more. He told her of my violent past, the things I used to do, things that I kept a secret from her. This made her angry, and the more they spent time together, the more she pulled away from me. She said she felt bad from time to time, but my cousin would reinforce her feelings towards me. The day of the quince, she said while we were dancing, she realized how stupid she was acting. She realized how much I loved her, and then her messages appeared on screen. In the days that followed, she was told by my wife's side of the family to give me space, to not call me, and she listened. She said she was watching her family fall apart because of her, and she couldn't do anything to fix it. She told me she understood why I did what I did, yet she wanted to reach out. Her grandfather kept telling her that I loved her, that I raised her, and despite what I saw through her messages, I will do the right thing, and she believed him. During the divorce, her mother fell in a dark place, not talking to her, barely eating, she was just existing. When she found out that my name was removed from her birth certificate, she said she had a panic attack. Her mother told her that they will have to move back to Brooklyn, and when she asked about her life and school, her mother told her, that was the life your father gave you, and he's not your father anymore. So she called me, begging, and I cursed her out, then hung up. She cried for days. She tried to reach out to my cousin who pretty much ignored her. She even went to the church and he told her to leave, called her a mistake. Her mother refused to talk to her, basically locked herself in a room, only leaving to use the bathroom or take a shower. She begged her grandfather to take her to see me, and when they came to Long Island, she learned that I moved. Her grandfather told her that he will talk to my grandmother and find out where I went. For the next two years, according to her, it was hell. The entire neighborhood knew what happened to her and her mother. Her father avoided her at all cost and tried not to pay child support. It took her grandfather to threaten him to start paying. 
In the meantime, her mother didn't talk to her. She was just locked in her room. The few times they did spoke, she called her a ungrateful girl and she was the reason why she lost the love of her life. Her grandfather had to put her mother in her place by telling her that her infidelity was the reason why she lost the love of her life and she locked herself back into the room. So Luna barely stayed home and that was how she met the father of her child. He worked in the corner bodega. They were the same age and after a few months of talking, one thing led to another and she ended up pregnant. Her grandfather was furious, but when her boyfriend insisted that he would marry her, that cooled things down. Luna said, her pregnancy was a blessing in disguise. Her mother began talking to her again and even began leaving the room to be by her side for every checkup. Being a senior in high school while pregnant was cliche, but she made it work. A month before the baby was born, she graduated and her boyfriend joined the Marines. He wanted to elope before leaving, but she wants a wedding. Her boyfriend had no issues naming his son after me. Apparently, his father was absent and the fact he was a junior was a reminder that he shared the name of a man who didn't want him. When she heard I was in town, she got a speeding ticket trying to get to my grandmother's apartment. She wanted to see me, wanted to apologize, wanted me to see her son. She just wanted to see me. However, she was late and she cried. When her mother gave her my number, she wanted to call me immediately, but the entire neighborhood was talking about how I beat her